Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Beneath, and it is by Dark Hand Games. Beneath plays two to four players, takes about an hour per player, and is for ages 13 and up, which is about right. And in the game Beneath, you're playing as dwarves, digging down into catacombs to gather minerals currency, and of course the main thing, which are ancient scroll pieces. If you can gather four ancient scroll pieces, it'll be able to tell you the way to the lost city of kings or treasure of kings, and that will extensively have you win the game. You'll be leveling up your dwarf, gathering better pickaxes, or you could be a warrior, gathering better weaponry to fight against monsters that may pop out, as well as the other dwarves trying to find the sacred scrolls themselves. If you can gather four before them, you win the game beneath, and if not, you'll be plunged into the depths of the catacomb. Oh no, poor puppy. So here we have the game Beneath and everything included. This game is monstrous. There's a ton of stuff in the Beneath and I'm gonna go ahead and show you it right now. Down below here, we have the board for the game which is indented so you can place certain pieces, specifically rock and rubble and different pieces of fire and whatnot. You're gonna get your own player boards as well, which are these guys here, which will let you place armor, shields, weapons, uh, other inventory items down below like boots, the different types of things in your bag and chest items that will let you carry more things this is your uh, carrying capacity which is here along with your health your shields and your movement speed this is the specific character and each character is slightly different and uses different items and whatnot this is a minor here and this one over here I believe is the uh, hero role which also has a different health stats and whatnot up here this board is basically your monster board and as you go throughout the dungeon from one area to the next this little piece is going to move along this track here and depending on the color it is on is depending on what monsters you'll be fighting if any monsters were to reside in that specific area you'd roll this die along with the color oh the color is green the number is one we're gonna have this monster pop out pretty simple all of these are the tokens throughout the game there is more as well which are currency tokens you're going to have exits and different types of events as well as different types of minerals that you can use to either obtain gold or you can use to um, obtain different items provided you have the right types of minerals and you've saved them uh, these are extra tokens that will be utilized for your monster boards. Speaking of monster boards, there are monsters and their boards, which are these guys here. The monster, its name, what die it uses to attack, and any specific references to what it does, along with all the monster miniatures and all the rest of the monster boards that are here. It also, on the board, has their monster's um, health. It has what uh, currency it has, what you can basically get if you defeat it, and of course spaces when it defeats you. And then it also has this which is its movement speed uh, that is pretty much how monsters work there's quite a few of them they all do different things these are all the rubble pieces you'll be using throughout the game which are basically going to be mining and as you mine different pieces of rubble ooh, you're going to be basically uh, taking them off until the point where there's nothing left on the board when you do that you'll be able to draw from a bag and that bag is going to have these different tokens in them and with that you can get some good stuff or some not so good stuff just depending on how lucky you are these are all the different items in the game that you can gather there are different mining items that are also going to have different tiers and you start with tier one and you advance and certain heroes will let you wield more than one of them others are just simply going to advance the ability to roll die these die are specifically what you'll be using to roll throughout the game and as you improve on your weapons you'll start with blue then you maybe go to pink and then green and then maybe even more successfully these die here these are the depth levels and there's four of them and as you go from one depth to the next it will tell you on here what the map looks like what items are in the map a little storyline and how large the uh, specific stacks are for these uh, pieces of granite that you'll be mining off of there are ghosts four, and it tells you kind of on the back here what is very likely to be found in these specific depths. This here is the bag in which you're going to be pulling stuff from. Fire pits over here, your four different types of dwarves that you're going to be able to choose from throughout the game, and then these pillars, which in general can't be mined, except for specific rare circumstances. And then finally additional player boards. The last thing to talk about are these scrolls here, and each set is for a different player, but if you can gather four of these guys here, that is all you need to win the game beneath. And okay, that's that's pretty much it. Not, not so bad, right? Oh, yeah, the rule book as well. Let's come up. And actually, no, let's go down. I'll set it up for one of the depth levels, explain how a turn works, and then show off how the different boards work and how they all function. And then we'll come up and I'll give you my read for the game Beneath, and you tell me what you think. So here is a two-player game of Beneath, just so you get an idea of how to play. And the first thing you're going to do is select a first player. And by doing so, you're going to select the player who was previously underground the like soonest. 
So in which case, oh, I happen to be in a subway, so he would be the player who gets to go first. Set the stat icons based on what it says, so a movement for two, the shield is at zero, and this guy's specific health is going to be seven, along with giving each player ten currency to be able to buy things, which is what you're going to do at the beginning of the game. Additionally, you're going to select one of the depth level ones, read the specific storyline involving the depth level, and then add a currency that it states is in the specific depth into your beneath bag. This bag here that's given to you, go ahead and take those. So I have six zeros here. I have four ones. I have four twos. Two different pieces of, I guess, minerals. And then two exits. So basically this is the way you're going to leave this depth and go to a new depth, shake it up good, and set the, uh, set the bag aside in some way. Then make sure that you have set up the board based on this this thing here. There's going to be red for fire, which will be these spaces here. And if you walk into them, you'll take damage. There's the granite pieces, which are these ones here. And if you go ahead and uh, see any of the uh, specific darker colored hexagons, you're going to be placing these guys. They're harder to mine. And then there's the rocks and then the players' starting areas. These are the starting areas we're going to be placing players. Beginning with the first player and then moving on to the second, third, and possibly even fourth player, going in a clockwise manner. To buy stuff, you'll be using your currency, and you start off by buying your Tier 1 weapon. So for the Dwarven Miner, you'd normally be placing the weapon over here. But because we don't have a lot of space, I'm just going to go ahead and set it down below here. And that is going to cost you a different uh, price point. This one here is only going to cost him him two so he'd actually lose the 10 here and then he's going to go down to eight you can make change utilizing these uh pieces of currency but remember you only have a certain amount of space so be careful of how do you do this you want to make sure you keep as much space as possible and this player over here the hero is also be buying the tier one item as well and this is actually going to cost him five which is a little more expensive so he's going to go from 10 to five and you're also going to be buying anything you want from the decks. Now, with your currency, it's probably good to use it on things like backpacks to start the game off with and other things. So, like, these, this thing here is going to let you uh, have more space to hold items. Uh, there's this chest as well that you can fit in your chest area. This is your bag area. Uh, there's going to be different types of items like healing runes and demonic runes. Uh, strong runes of healing, there's throwing axes, there's going to be stone masonry, uh, burning pits, which you can use as traps and fire and inferno as well. There's a whole heap of different items you can purchase, and the cost is down below in the bottom left. That is a very expensive 50 coin item, demonic armor, which gives you 8 armor for every specific level. So you can buy these things with the currency you have left. Make sure your crystal is going to start on the one tier, and you have this purple die over here to indicate the monsters that may or may not come out. There's no monsters here in this specific level at the beginning of the game, but if there is, it'll be drawn from the bag there, and you'll be using these monster tokens to symbolize them as well. Each specific depth is going to have one, two, three, and possibly even four stacks of these pieces of rock, in which case it'll take longer for you to dig through them. But to begin the game now, we're simply going to have this player move and then complete an action. And usually it's going to be either, either to attack something, like a player or a monster, or it is going to be used uh, to basically dig. And how that's going to work is he'll move his two spaces, he'll choose either of these, and then he's going to roll a die based on his weapon. I'll put the weapon up here right now. And it's one blue die, and there's zeros and ones on here. He'll roll it. If he gets a one, he's good. If not, zero, no good. If the dwarven misses, then you may re-roll this die. Uh, this may only be used once per turn. So he's going to try and re-roll it. Zero, still no good. That would end his turn. And then it be this player's turn here, and he is going to also get one blue die, and he's going to roll. One, that's nice. This one also says that it may she can sharpen his axe once per turn and roll an extra D, uh, D, a blue D one at a cost of one every time it's used. So he rolled here, so he'll go ahead and spin this in order to roll again, and he got a zero. But let's go ahead and say he got another one. So he got two ones in a row. He would actually get rid of this one here, and he'd get rid of this one here. And in this game, every time you remove a stack, it could be one, two, three, or four, you're going to go ahead and pull from this bag. And this bag is going to present you with some, hopefully, good things. And you can look at them and put them face down if you want these with the face down. He got one currency there, and he got the exit. Whenever the exit straw gets placed in the area it was found from, and this can take you to the next area if you want. Once you go into this exit, you can then go either down deeper, or you can come up. You can never go 
uh, higher than the depth level one and you can never go lower than the depth level four but he might want to keep that there and just keep mining and then be the next player's turn he'd be moving his movement of two or up to two and then he's going to roll his die that's a zero again and a one and he's going to be able to pull from the bag as well and so basically the beginning of the game is simply you're just going to try and be pulling a ah, zero no good pulling currency because after you finish up with all the stuff here you're going to have somebody walk into this exit area and you're really going to be able to buy things there's a buying phase in which the player who exits first will get to buy things and then place and choose what depth level they're going to next and so it can be uh, beneficial to leave earlier now how it works is if there's only one character left and there's um, no monster then you're simply going to end the depth level and everyone has to leave but if in a three player game per se let's just say that this was another dwarf if this player were to exit the game would still keep going as long as these two dwarves remain so you have to make sure you decide when and where you want to leave and so let's go ahead and say this, this player decides to exit here because that's the basic idea with this you're going to be moving and mining and you can also choose to fight each other as well with basically the same idea utilizing uh, the damage from here and subtracting it down on health but when this happens basically this player is left all by himself so these both were, are going to have to leave and he's gonna go here I guess and he would go here and then you're going to actually remove all of these pieces and look through the next depth level. And so we'll go ahead and just take another look at this next depth level. And this is the new map in which you would go ahead and take place. You would go ahead and have this all set up along with the new types of bag contents where it's going to be a different type of mineral. There's a, a scroll in here, which is very useful. This is one of the four you need to exit with to win the game. So if you can exit with four of these scrolls, that's going to win you the game. There's three tens, five uh, fives, and six twos, as well as one exit. So you would set this board up. Along with the first player who left, which I guess would be this guy technically, he would be able to purchase any tier level 2 items he wanted with the current currency he has, as well as purchasing any of these items as well. Additionally, there is a cost uh, associated with these minerals, and you can actually turn your minerals in to gain the value or reward for them, or save them, because certain items are actually going to allow you to uh, make them so like this one's gonna require five and a green stone so you can go ahead and make that item with this specific card combination whenever you move up or down you're going to also move this up on the track and this is going to basically make it more and more challenging as monsters are likely to come out uh, additionally if you were to have a monster in this bag and you pull it out maybe this gets removed uh, the monster pops out what's gonna happen is pretty simple you'll check the color for this specific crystal here okay it's green you're then going to look at these tiers here and go okay this is green you roll this die and then you're going to say okay one and you're going to look at this monster you're going to find the monster in the stack and then you're going to place that monster in the area along with the board in which case the monster will act similarly to another player moving around the board and fighting you as well and that's pretty much the idea of the game trying to gather the specific items out of this bag fighting each other if you must to attempt to steal items from other players kicking them out of the dungeon to basically hoard the most scrolls and treasure that you possibly can delving deeper into the caverns to attempt to fight stronger monsters to gain better loot and hopefully gain the scrolls you need as well as of course improving yourself utilizing skills as well and these can be purchased alongside with the weapons and items and they do different things like for instance the hero does dual wielding he has a rage ability and they're both uh, able to level up from one to two if you have the currency to do so now that is pretty much the idea for the game beneath escaping the dungeons and getting those four scrolls will have you win the game let's come up and i'll talk about it so before we get into my review for the game beneath let's talk about a few caveats a few additional things i didn't really cover during my review down below and that is first of all the monsters and the monsters have a lot of special abilities they have different things like passive and unique skills like scaling armor and they have some drawbacks as well this guy is a draklin assassin it's this little guy here it says that it will always attack the closest dwarf when being discovered if two or more dwarves are of equal distance from it then it will roll a die and the dwarf that has the lowest number becomes the newest target basically it'll attack as soon as it pops out its special ability being blind rage is when it attacks a draklin assassin deals damage to all dwarves and monsters that it is adjacent to even if a dwarf or monster is stood behind the draklin assassin it is still dealt damage all dwarves and monsters are dealt the same damage so it does a spin attack it has armor, and when it's attacked, the damage is received is reduced by 1 due to its armor, unless a 1 is rolled by the attacker, in which case the damage is still 1. 
and then it has drawbacks as well. All of the monsters have a good amount of text and describe them all. They're very different in nature and definitely some are stronger than others. Speaking of that, as the game progresses and as you go from one depth to the next, you're going to advance down this track of different colors and the hardest and scariest color is going to be red. If you get down to the 13th, 15th, and 10th area, anything past 15 is gonna be red as well. You're gonna roll the die and you're gonna assign a monster based on this track of difficulty level, which is of course going to be a more strong monster and of course more deadly or dangerous dangerous those monsters will have attack die and you'll be using all these different die depending on the monster and those monsters could be very very aggressive or not super super aggressive and have specific abilities you're gonna have these little pitch spaces or burning spaces and when you walk on them you'll take damage they're basically not things you can mine they're just nasty little spaces that can be traps or just be there when the start of the event occurs or the uh, different caverns occur this granite piece is generally not able to be mined, except for in special case cases, as well as specific abilities are going to determine whether or not you can utilize this in some unique way, and there are specific abilities that will let you do that, but in most cases it's just a way to prevent you from moving across it, so you'll have to try and move around them. And every monster has a unique miniature to them that you'll be utilizing throughout your descent in the caverns below. That's pretty much the basis of the game. There's a ton of different abilities you can get, a ton of different items that you can get based on different combinations, of cards and specifically currency along with of course the different types of minerals that you can either sell or utilize in whatever way you'd like those exits are really powerful because they will allow you to get out and additionally they will allow you to be able to choose to buy first choose to uh, go up or down in the caverns as well as be able to place first being able to place and position yourself is nice at the cost of potentially not being able to get all the items in the previous cavern level before you chose to exit Overall, this game is a dungeon crawler in sorts. The game itself is probably medium heavy to heavy heavy, I suppose, but it is light in concept. You're basically going to be moving and performing an action that is either going to be to attack or to roll to mine. Mining is a good way to get currency and attacking is a good way to kick out dwarves and monsters and get whatever currency they have. If you defeat a dwarf, they're going to be sent out along with dropping certain random items that you'll basically be able to gain and that's very useful. And of course, if you can do that to your opponents, it's going to be devastating for them. The depths of the caverns get progressively more challenging and I really, really enjoyed the lower depths depths of this game because there is a decent amount of danger and difficulty involved and you can kind of choose how you want to move throughout the game. As a two player game it's fine but it is slow to start and basically that means you'll be rolling the die, I think these are the blue ones here, that have a lot of zeros so a lot of opportunity to miss and not be able to crack the rocks. The miner is obviously going to be better at mining whatever the character like the warrior is going to be able to attack better and getting in position to defeat your opponents is pretty useful and can maneuver them out of being able to mine certain areas and allow you to mine them instead because you are a threat as the warrior. Each class presents its own unique threats and benefits as well as some negative aspects to it. And uh, they all have their own unique abilities that can kind of help them progress throughout the game in their own unique way. And the monsters present their own unique threat as well. I really enjoyed going throughout this game. My only little qualm, I suppose, is at the beginning you just simply roll, 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 roll until you finally get enough and then choose when you want to kind of exit the game or not. And I guess that specifically the miner is going to have a better uh, aptitude throughout the game as far as mining goes so you'll have to perform some of the different actions as far as attacking goes I think I actually like it if you could all choose to be a miner or you could all choose to be a warrior as opposed to one player every player player being something different so because I wanted to be the miner but I couldn't because somebody else had already picked it and so I was forced to play a role that I didn't necessarily want to play but that being said it wasn't that much of a, a negative now getting through that the game itself is gorgeous the pieces are really nice this prototype is one of the best I have seen you can tell there's a lot of love and care put into it and it's also one of those games that you can pick up explain the rules rather quickly and get into it and get deep into the dungeons and you can kind of push the game as long as you want because you can choose to go up and down those levels especially if you're not doing well maybe you want to exit out so you can get higher so it's easier for you to actually get certain things and the players who are ahead of you can kind of slow down to a certain extent you kind of create your own choices and how you want to control the narrative of the game when choosing to exit these specific caverns. Another thing to note too is being able to choose between items which will let you get more specifically or utilizing stuff that is going to mess with your opponents in certain ways. I specifically like this game with three and even four players more than two players because it presents more of a challenge throughout the game where you're dealing with not just trying to mine as fast as you can and avoid monsters but also the other players present a significantly more advanced threat when playing with obviously more 
of players because the board doesn't get any larger or smaller based on the number of players in the game. There's a definitely different feel when playing this game between two and four players. Each player count does present its own uniqueness to it. There's a lot of stuff in the game. There's a lot of different currency and items and everything like that, so it can seem kind of overwhelming, but in fact is very, very simple. Move, mine or attack, end turn, exit, switch it up, and also dealing with this track as you progress throughout the game can be a bit of a challenge if you try and push too far too fast. Overall, I really enjoyed Beneath. It's a really great game as far as theme goes, and the uh, you can just see that until the different amounts of care put into each and every different uh, monster because there's so many different things that they are able to do and the changes related to each of them feels different every time you jump into the game and play in a unique way. I've played this all the different player counts and I can definitely say if you like having a three or a four player game this is something I would definitely take a look at if you're a fan of an RPG type game that gives you a lot of story as well as a tactical game that lets you not only just fight back and forth like a lot of games but gives you that extra mining ability which makes it and presents a unique and interesting experience and that is my uh, review for Beneath. Let's go ahead and cover the outro. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here down below on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that notification bell button. It does help me so much and I greatly appreciate it. As well as taking a look at the game Beneath. If you like a game that's for three and four players, I think that's where it shines the brightest. As well as, of course, this is a prototype, so expect the components to be even a better quality and the components for this prototype are really good just as they stand so I'm very excited to see what it's gonna look like when it's fully done as well as taking a look at our website unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more and our live streams every Wednesday 7 30 p.m. PST along with our friends show me how to win and before you play they do some great tutorial work and I'm very impressed with their stuff I can't wait to see what they do next all right guys that's all you got for you this time and as always I look forward to digging into the depths with you beneath next time